Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we'll look at cutting an object from its background in Photoshop and we're going to do it using the pen tool. I'm going to explain the pen tool to you and how to use it as we go. The image I'm using is from unsplash.com and the photo is by Dan Gold. Should you wish to do so, you can go to unsplash.com and download this image so that you can follow along. Download the image and open it in Photoshop. Now I've done just that, so let's switch over to Photoshop and get started. There are a number of ways that you could cut an image like this from its background. Somebody asked me how it would be done using the pen tool. That's why we're doing the pen tool today. So I'm not making a decision based on it would be the best tool to use in this instance, but simply because I want to teach the pen tool. But that said, I think it probably is the best tool anyway. Now I'm just zooming into the image and just sort of moving around to see what it is before I start. So I'm just going to make a decision about what things I'm going to bring in with the image, which bits I'm going to include with the vehicle and which bits I'm going to cut out. So it helps to be a little bit familiar with what's going on in the image before you actually get started. I'm zooming in using the zoom tool and then to move the image I hold the space bar down and then I can just flip it around with my mouse so my space bar is still held down and as soon as I let go of the space bar well we go back to having the zoom tool rather than the hand tool visible. So let's get started over here. We're going to use the pen tool. So I'm going to the regular pen tool. It's probably the best tool for the job. You need to start somewhere. So I'm going to start in this point because it's actually a sort of hard point. There's nothing soft about this point here. So I'm going to click to start. Now I have some settings enabled. So let's just see what we've got. I've got a three point thickness. It probably can be down to about two points, but I do want you to be able to see what it looks like. And I have selected light reds again, so that you can see it. I think the default is blue and I thought that that would be a little difficult to see on this image. So you can choose whatever color you want. It has nothing to do with what you're doing. It just has to do with the visibility of what you're doing on the screen. And I've got rubber band enabled and that's allowing me to see where I'm going. So you can see that this is the rubber band. If I didn't have the rubber band, we wouldn't be seeing that. So I've got pretty happy with my settings. Hold the space bar, just move into a new position. Now you want less points rather than more. You'll get a better result with less points. So I'm looking at a point about here to be my next point. So I'm going to click and drag. And when I drag, I can create that curve. I like to create my curve points as I go along. So I've just let go of the left mouse button. I'm going to come into about over here. We're going to do a turn at this point, but I think I can make it with just one point. So it's going to be a sort of shallow curve. Now I want to head from here up the front of the windscreen. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key because that lets me swing this handle around. So, so far I haven't let go of the left mouse button, but I'm going to let go it now so that we can anchor that point in. Hold the space bar, move everything. Now I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to just make it round this curve here, probably by making a small point here with a straight line, nearly straight, maybe a little bit of a curve, and then we'll take off across the top of the car. Now any of these points can of course be edited later on, but it pays to sort of do a little bit of work as you go along here and try and get it right as you go. Hold the space bar down to move. I'm going to head off to about here, click and drag, and that just lets me bend this line. And I'm just looking for a nice even curve. You get the curve by moving this handle, and the steepness of the curve is also reflected in how long the handle is. And it's just an art, it's just something that comes with practice. So you want to practice this a little bit. Now, I want to go in here a little bit and you can see that I'm headed out. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key because that's going to allow me to adjust this handle and not this one. So I was able to adjust just one handle and just make it a little bit shorter so that I can head down here for the windscreen. And there's a very slight curve there and I'd like to pick that curve up. Again, Alt or Option just to straighten that point out as we make it. So 
So I think a bit of a curve around here to make the bottom of the windscreen. Hold the space bar. Now we're headed down the back of the car. This is part of the car and I'm going to include it. But this is a fairly sharp point in here. So I'm just going to click to make that point. Come out here, click and drag. So it's a combination of clicks and click and drag. Now I have to make it around the bottom here and you can see with the rubber band that I'm not going to be able to make it along that edge and as I change this handle here well hold the alt or option key and you can swing this handle round. So I'm going to click to make this point here and then alt or option to drag this around. So it's a little bit of fiddly work in just getting around these points here. I think I'm going to drag out and I'll come back in and shorten this handle so I can take this one around the corner. Come into about here, make this curve, Alt or Option and just click here. If you can see that you're going to have to swing the handles around, you can actually swing the handles around before you finish the point. If you don't do that, you can just go back and do it a little bit later on. So click and drag here. I know I have to swing the handle around. So before I finish this point, I'm just going to swing it around and keep going. Again, swing it around because I need to head in the completely the opposite direction. Now, if you need to move the point itself, hold down the control or command key. You can actually move the point as you're drawing. So if you get it in the wrong place and you know it's in the wrong place, then you can control or command, click on it, and that allows you to just move it. So this is kind of a really good exercise in learning to use the pen tool and just forcing yourself to try and make this entire shape, this entire cutout using the pen tool so that you can get practice with it. At this point we need to make some decisions. All this black area belongs to the car because if we looked in here there would be the wheel well and we need to sort of decide what bit we're going to call a car and what bit we're just going to call shadow. So my thoughts are that we're going to cut across here. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and swing this handle around here. And I'm just going to head across to here and make something that potentially would look like the undercarriage of the car. Now we're going to come around the wheel, just dragging to try and make these points. I think I've probably come a bit far. so. Now, what I've done is I've just lost the whole thing. I've just clicked something and I've lost everything. Well, that's just fine because I've still got the pen tool. So I can just click on the end here to pick it back up again. This is the nice thing about the pen tool is it's fairly flexible. If you just think you've lost it, you really haven't. All you have to do is just go reconnect to it again. Again, I'm just trying to use the control key because I'm not making particularly good selections here and I'm just trying to remake them as I go. I think I'll probably have to work on the wheel a little bit later on. So let's go up here. Again, we've got to make a decision about what's car and what's not. Well, I'm going to head out here and call this part car and this part not car. Let's head along here. Nice straight pace. I'm not going to bring the string in with me. I call that not car. Let's go up here. Alt or Option drag because I need to now start coming back down for the wheel. Let's try and make a really big piece here. Let's go for this curve. I've got one end of it, I think. I think I need to do a bit of work on this end. Well, I can come down here and reform this. 
Let's do Alt or Option to bring this handle down. Sometimes you will need to do a few pen strokes just to get around a sort of detailed area, but try and use as few as you can. Okay. This is part of the car. It's a little sort of protector over the lights. At least that's what I remember from an old car that we had that looked just like this. Now I've done one too many points here so I'm going to press Control Z just to undo the last one and then I can just continue on. And I'm back at the starting point. So I now have a closed path. I'll press Control or Command Zero to zoom back out. This is the path that I have. At this point, you can go and make some alterations. I can see daylight through here. So I'm thinking that I don't have maybe a particularly good selection here. Let's go now to the Direct Selection tool, which allows me to select on any of these points and just alter these points. If the handles have been previously broken, if you use the Alt or Option key to break the handles, then they're going to stay broken. They never get stuck back together again. So you might have to adjust both if that's necessary. So right now I've got a path and I may not want to finish this entire project right now. So one of the things that you can do in Photoshop is you can save this path. So we're going to the Paths panel and here it is, the Work Path. Now it's the wrong way round because what we've actually got selected is the outside of the car, not the inside of the car. Well, we can change that by choosing one of these other options and combine shapes with the one that worked. What you want is the inside of the car to be white and the outside, the bit that you're going to discard to be gray. So if I drag this onto the new path icon, then we create a path rather than a work path. Work paths can disappear but paths won't disappear because it is actually a path and this can also be edited at any time you can just come in here and you pick up the path and you continue to edit it if you select it with the path selection tool then you get all your anchor points and you can select the direct selection tool and edit any of those points so all we would need to do is to make sure that we saved this file in a format where paths can be saved and I suggest for that you just go for Photoshop PSD file format that's a nice easy safe format to use now let's just go and put our path back for a minute let's go to the layers palette where we've obviously got our image on the background layer well I'm going to unlock it so I'm going to click here on the unlock icon and what I can do is to create this path as a mask. So with the path selected, I can control click on the add mask icon and that adds a vector mask to this image. And what we're seeing then is the cutout. This is our cutout Volkswagen. It's been cut out from its background, but this is a vector mask. This is not a bitmap mask. So it can be edited using the direct selection and the path selection tool. And if you alter the mask, then you're going to alter the cutout. So let's just take this up here. You can see that it's all live. I'm going to undo that. So that is a way of testing your mask. Just see what it looks like and you'll be able to see if there are any problems by zooming in. You can also put a colored filled layer underneath it. So I'm going to control click on the new icon. White is my foreground color. So I'll press Alt Backspace or Option Delete and we can see the vehicle on a white background. You could fill it with black to see it on a black background. Looking at this rear tire and thinking that I could probably do a little bit of work there. But that's the basics of using the pen tool to make a cutout of an object. I suggest that you save it as a path. I suggest that you use the mask option. I suggest that you save it because if you don't like it later on, it's very easy then to come back and add or subtract from it. If I have a look at this 
original image. I'm just going to shift click on the mask to hide it. Let's have a look at the original image. There is perhaps a little bit in here that I might want to add to the mask and you can do that obviously at this point. If you want to add it to the mask, I would just turn that mask off for now. Go back to the pen tool and make your selection. So I'm just going to go down here to make my selection of the bit that I want to add. So if I go to the Paths palette, I have a work path that is just that little bit, but it's not selected correctly because we can see that this is the white bit and this is the dark bit. Well, let's go and select Combine Shapes, and now we have that as the piece that we're actually working with. So I'm going to choose Edit, Cut. So I'm cutting that path. I'm going to this path. I'm going to choose Edit, Paste. Now I've got both paths and what I want to do is to unite them. So I'm going to make sure I have Combine Shapes selected and then I'll click Merge Shape Components and now that extra piece is actually in my path. So now I can use that path as my vector mask. So I've got my path here. So let's just go to the vector mask and let's get rid of that. So I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the trash can. I want to delete it. Let's go back and make a new one. So we'll go back to this path, which includes that little piece. Go back to our Layers palette and Control or Command click on the Add Layer Mask icon to add in a layer mask that again is a vector layer mask, but this time it includes the little bit for the windscreen wiper. So those paths are fully editable. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope this has helped you a little bit in working out how you would use the pen tool to cut an object from its background in Photoshop. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.